Hi, today we're going over the effect of taxes on supply and demand. So we'll start off with is taxes on supply and demand. So first what we're going to do is draw our standard supply and demand graph where we have quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. We're going to draw our downward sloping demand curve and our upward sloping supply curve. And then we know that the origin is going to give us zero. We know where they cross is going to give us our equilibrium values. So now what we're going to do is place a tax on sellers. And the trick here to make this work is to think, okay, so right now at this given quantity, we'll call it Q sub 1, suppliers are willing to supply this amount. So if you place a tax on them, are they going to want to charge more money or less money? They're probably going to want to charge more money. So what we can do is just shift up by the amount of the tax. We'll call it supply plus tax. And that will give us our new supply curve. So the magnitude of the shift up is going to be equal to the magnitude of the tax. So for example, if this intersected here and here, then the magnitude would be equal to the tax. Say the tax is $5, we would shift the supply curve up by $5. But what happens is after you institute the tax, we have to find this new equilibrium. So this is where the demand curve is going to intersect the supply curve plus the tax. So what happens is we end up with a lower Q2. So this ends up being equilibrium quantity after the tax. And then we end up with a higher price. We'll call it P sub 2, which is the price after the tax. But what's interesting here is that this new price isn't the price that the sellers receive because they have to pay the tax. So they actually receive the price plus tax minus the tax or this new price right here. So what happens is when you put a tax on sellers, you actually see equilibrium quantity go down and equilibrium price go up. Now what happens if you put a tax on consumers? Well, so what you need to figure out is, okay, everything else equal, if you put a tax on consumers, how much are they willing to pay for that given product? And if we keep quantity equal, and they have to pay more because of a tax, they're going to be willing to pay less, everything else equal, because they know that a tax is going to be added onto it. So in reality, they're paying this price, but they have to lower their willingness to pay because they know that that tax is going to be added to them. So again, the magnitude of the shift is going to be equal to the tax that's placed on consumers. So what ends up happening is we have this new equilibrium, which is going to be where supply intersects this new demand with the tax. So we end up with a lower quantity, and when we draw that line up, we get this new price. And so this new equilibrium price is going to be the price that the sellers receive, but it's not actually the price that the consumers pay, because this is the equilibrium quantity, but to figure out how much they pay, we take their original willingness to pay, but then we draw the line up to where their willingness to pay plus the tax gets considered. So we have P1 and then P2 with the tax showing the new equilibrium price. So just like having the tax placed on sellers, we see the equilibrium quantity going down and the equilibrium price going up. If we put the tax on consumers, we see the same phenomenon, equilibrium quantity going down and equilibrium price going up.